ファルコンを超えた者だけがファルコンになれるユースザック今日から君がキャプテンファルコンだ<笑>私は死なん死なんぞファルコンアームうわあ What's up, guys? It's Project. After a full two weeks after DLC launch, I'm finally bringing you the first and the last build for DLC 2. This is not even complete, it's not min maxed, but I'm tired of farming already. As you saw, still capable of Falco punching hoes to death. Because the montage was short, here's generally how the build plays taking a big part out of my Yoshimitsu build playstyle, which was reliant on Ninjutsu and God Spam. Generally, for boss fights, you eat two lantern fruits at the start, do all your buffs, and then begin with Sloth, followed by Guardian Spirit Talisman, into Gauze, into Gallic Gun, into Gauze, and repeat. So it now removes Kunai from the equation as the new orbital ninjutsus can not only interrupt enemies like Yokai skills can, they also generate a ton of anima with my setup, meaning every orb equals one Gauze use. And once you apply Confusion with a Feather, you Falco punch them to death as it does more damage than grapples. Equipping two para-damage accessories for Winds of Ruin farm also means one punching them to death, capable of doing more damage than a Yokai Shift grapple build. But I digress, that's how you play the build. Otherwise, you can do your fancy karate moves to take the enemy down, but just know that this way showcase is the fastest way to kill with this build. So, here's the build. If you subscribed and have notifications on, I basically said what the build was going to be like over a week ago, and in my playthrough of the DLC, I also said I was going to do Hayabusa Claw build day one, so full dragon set with six piece Marisi. A pretty common sense combination, not something unique. And before a crybaby cries about inventing a build using two full sets before me. Ooh, congrats. But this is my balance build between high damage, mobility, and some tankiness. Unlike pure ninjutsu builds, which would be huh? Fulkato plus Marisi, this one is somewhat tankier. Not only that, but it beats Yochitsune, something pure ninjutsu struggles with. I initially went max damage, but I scaled back damage for more survivability, as I found I was getting killed way too easily in large mob maps, so I'm missing around 400 attack on top of missing 20% damage from accessories, on top of not even completing the Marisi set because Team Ninja thinks this RNG is fun. Yay, it is. Psych, it's not. Hence the build is not complete, nor at this full potential, so what you saw, you can actually do better than that, if you choose to be a masochist. I believe this setup is better than Ryu plus Susano setup as well, which is the true max damage setup for claws, but it just kills slightly slower than this due to needing to waste time on stacks. There's no difference between doing a 200k punch versus a 150k punch. Both one-shot most enemies, except the 200k Susano takes a little bit longer, so so I believe this is better by a small margin, but having the utility of Feather Spam is nice as well for general play. So let's quickly go over stats, weapon, Captain Falcon Claws. It took me 78 freaking Ryu kills to finally get a claw with Star Grapple. However, that's not best in slot anymore, because you punch, not grope the enemy. So you don't even need that. Instead, the best in slot stat is Transform Constitution. If you don't have this as an inheritable already, 
farm it as a natural stat on the weapon. You can temper Lucky Drop weapon on accessories to increase your chances at getting more claws from Ryu. But because I have transformed skill, I have to waste points on skill for more damage, when in reality you would ideally be going 200 constitution and 200 dex. So this is kinda wasted potential here. Also it's not even level 190 yet. The rest of the stats are good to get though, though star dexterity would be nice, and lastly remodel to AA scaling. Secondary weapon is sword. Now you can use sword for this build instead of claws, but it's just not as good. EI doesn't hit as hard, claws have stomp to boost limitless oko damage, which I did use in a few clips to get the damage up, although the timing is as tight as your anime waifu's cooch, so it's not worth risking losing that out of key or confusion state on the enemy. Some enemies simply recover too fast, so I don't recommend it. If you're gonna go sword though, chances are grapples will do more damage for you than EI or Karama. Up to you. You can probably squeeze in both, but it's gonna be tight. But you'd also have to go 200 skill instead of dex, so you lose out there as well for sword. Meh. Range weapons, Marisi. Good luck finding them. It took me roughly 5 to 7 hours just to get a second Marisi range, hence, I ain't dealing with that crap ever again. The only important stat here is to put Agility A on the main weapon, as you don't go under 10 pounds for Lightness AA to really matter. Armor! Full Hia set. The Dragon Ninja boosts Claw and Sword damage, which, combined with its melee damage 8%, is somewhere between a 30-40% to boost in damage. I haven't mathed it out myself, but it's pretty significant, and it's raw upfront damage that doesn't require a condition. I went with Water Buffalo Helm for more defense. Now, if you wanted to go true double A agility for max damage, max lightness, and enough squishiness to be killed by a cocky grab attack, then go with an anime helm like Tengu Mask or Demon Mask. Alternatively, if you got a Sudama Mask for item drop stuff, you can use that as well for farming. Up to you, it's pretty flexible with the Marisi slot. The armor stats you want are shown here. Untouched is the most important. Gloves want limitless damage, and the heavy piece might also want limitless damage as well, from an inheritable, but the other light pieces, you want Ellie weapon or active skill damage stars. Either or, there's no difference. But light armor gets the highest version of those stats, so you want them for more overall general damage. After that, attack. Star attack on gloves is best in slot, and it gives you power on everything you can. And the rest is up to you. Just make sure to get one tenacity to avoid dying to fire or poison dot. Accessories! Ooh boy, the fun part. You want double Marisi with double star damage stats of melee versus zero key and melee versus purified enemy. That trio is what you must get to perfect the build. If not, forget Marisi exists like I did and just equip the best damage charms you got. The last two piece bonuses of Marisi are not worth losing 40 to 80% damage, so go with double zero key and maybe purity or saturation damage on top. From there, you want ninjutsu damage and anime charge, or luck accessory drop, depending if you want to farm or not. Now, scroll is pretty open-ended. Ninjutsu damage bonus I tested was the best damage booster out of all the stats. But if you can run counter yokai tactics with ninjutsu damage bonus, then that'd be the best in slot for damage. Ultimate constitution would be the next BIS with untouched ninjutsu last. The more untouched ninjutsu you have, the merrier. Stats. Like I said earlier, ideally 200 constitution and 200 dex. 50 magic for the longest uptime on buffs and debuffs, enough stamina to get A agility, and dump the rest into skill for more damage and ninjutsu power. As you can see, I'm also missing 100 levels still, so missing a lot of attacks still. My peak damage setup reached nearly 4k attack, so yeah, try to get transform constitution at all costs so you can better reach that goal at an earlier level. Spirits! The legendary bird from Pokemon Gold is by far the best spirit in the game. Purity element is the best element for key damage, and Horsey likes that key damage. So this route is better than the Fox. With using its Guardian skill, you can forego Purity Talisman altogether for a better debuffer in Ho-Oh's skill. Its stats also help tank better. Of course, the main thing that enables me to kill fast is this try setup from my Yoshimitsu build. Gauz, Nama, and Nups, the rap gang of the century, you must get ninjutsu anima gain on all three. That's what enables you to generate the amount of anima you saw earlier. But until you're able to get them, just use Nekomata as the spirit instead. You lose damage, but it's what you're going to have to use until you get those stats on those cores. But with all three combined, you get A- anima bonus ninjutsu hit. 
If he did get Transform Constitution on Claw as a natural stat, then you can inherit a Mrit Absorb Anima gain or a 4th Ninjutsu Anima gain onto the Claw as well via Corrupted Weapon Method for even more Anima gain. Clan! We're going old school with Hanka. Which we try, we trying to stay alive here, boys. For skills, don't care. Just get limitless with raging or equip reckless if you're too scared. But the rest is up to you. I don't even bother with claw stacks, as again, it's something that slows you down. I'll show my hot bar for Ninjutsu and Omnio instead of the whole splash screen. Both projectiles are necessary with AOE Water Feather and Lightning Single Target. This gets you all the elements, as the fire projectile covers the fire element, while the Umbral has no element so it's perfect for not triggering confusion as you only want to confuse right as they go out of key so your Falco Punch can make it in time before the confusion debuff fades out. And the rest is honestly up to you. You can go Protection Talisman, you can go Transference to rid the defense down on you from Carnage, you want one Soul Purge as it scales damage a ton along with luck. For Winds of Ruin Farm, I take out some Nijitsu for 6 Paralytic Ground Fires and that should generally take care of any human fight really, well, except for Hayabusa fight. The guy can't stand still for a second, so you kinda gotta brute force him. Sloth, uh, I really find use for, so I'm unsure if needed when I interrupt enemies constantly anyway. But for Mystic Art, I use Amplification and Enlightenment. And that's the build! GG's! Well played! Now, time for rant! So, if we came for the build only, thanks for watching. now bye! Rant time! I'm done with builds. Sorry, it's just not worth the grind and stress anymore. Team Ninja even had the nerve to remove methods of making things easier to get, i.e. save scumming, Sudama trade, nerfing Bazaar, nerfing Revenant trade, all while doing diddly squat against save editors. So while the one good thing the DLC brought, more creative sets and build potential, they managed to still gate and make it a huge hassle to put the pieces together for a build to work the way you wanted it to, at its peak form. Even this build, you guys will struggle to make, I'm sure of it. Games like Path of Exile or Diablo 3 have a much easier time making builds. There's better systems in place, there's trade, there's reforge, there's guaranteed rewards. But here? In Neo 2? Nah. Enjoy the RNG slogfest while most things are able to 2-3 shot a whole category of builds during the whole process. They attempted to make the grind grindy to prolong the game's life, but this game isn't a games as a service. There's no seasons, there's no cosmetics. There's not even a hardcore mode which I'm sure you skilled players will love. Instead, it's just an empty void of 5 months between each DLC. So why prolong the RPG side for then? You gain nothing from players playing the game in the 4th month, so why not make it more accessible so there's a bigger burst of activity for each new DLC? Instead, the reverse effect happened where people just dropped the game after initial DLC slice and didn't even bother with a new difficulty, because they knew you still wouldn't change the problems in a game. Oh wait, maybe they wouldn't know, because he took two weeks to translate the patch notes to English. Hmm. So yeah, looking back on my previous rant video, pretty much none of it got fixed aside from a nice handful of good sets they added. Hence, it's not worth it anymore, so enjoy this build. I likely won't bother with more. Hours and hours to get one piece? One piece? It's simply not worth my time. It's not fun. The theory craft is fun, the final result is fun, but the hours, days, weeks in between is not. So yeah, the line in the sand has been drawn. With that said, yeah, Full Ninja is viable. Full Tank Axe or Dachi is viable. Anime Switch Glaive with Corruption Set is viable. Reaper Kusa is defo viable. Water Sword, Two Cats Blender is viable. Axe Yokai Realm Grapple Bill is viable. Lumber Chop, Spin the Wind, basically Axe is the best weapon. So yeah, that's it for me guys. Hope you guys enjoy the build at the least. Comment down below your thoughts on the build or thoughts on the rant I guess. Was the DLC enough to make you stay, or are you parting ways to the final one? As always, clicky likey that button, and subscribe for more Neo 2 DLC next next year? Cyberpunk next year? Demon Souls next year because I can't get a damn PS5? Ah! Ugh. Guys, I need a hug. <laughs> Have a good one. Bye-bye. Hiya! Hiya!